All three Valley School Districts will soon begin the new school year with online learning. But State Senator Melissa Melendez, who represents the Coachella Valley, recently tweeted, there is no science or data to suggest that kids are at risk from COVID. Students should return to school in person and all school sports activities should resume. Let's stop robbing our kids of the education we owe them. We can do this safely. I spoke today with Senator Melendez to find out more. Senator Melendez, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. You've been highly critical of how Governor Newsom and state Democrats have handled this pandemic. Starting with the restrictions, what specifically do you disagree with? Well, you know, I understand that this pandemic has really taken us all by surprise. It's not something we have ever dealt with before. So it's it changes as we go, and I understand that. But I do think there have been some missteps along the way, particularly with the, the closing of the schools and not allowing them to reopen for an in-person classroom setting. That has a lot of people very upset. A lot of the students you know, very stressed out about it. I have three of my own kids out of my five kids, three are still in the K through 12 system. And, you know, a lot of us are trying to figure out how exactly we're going to do this. But really, the CDC and the American Academy of Pediatrics have both said that kids need to go back to school and they need to go back in person, that it's okay, they can and they should. And of course, you know, there are certain protocols that should be put in place, obviously, to, to protect everyone, but that it really is necessary that kids go back to school. And that's really where I'm the most disappointed most recently is the fact that schools are not going to reopen. You mentioned you have five kids. Would you I do. really feel comfortable having them back in classrooms right now? You know, I really would. My daughter works at a grocery store. One of my other sons works. He delivers pizza. So they are in an environment every day where they are coming into contact with a lot of people. They have been fine. So for me, you know, I look at it and think, well, if it's safe for her to work in a grocery store, why is it not safe for her to go into a classroom setting? And again, I think if there are some hot spots. Um, then we should probably take some extra precautions, maybe perhaps a reconsideration. But for, a, for a, a blanket rule for the entire state to go to distance learning, I think is a huge mistake, not only because it's going to affect their intellectual development, but their mental health status as well. Is, I mean, we've got a lot of these kids who are really struggling, as well as you know, the family members are struggling too, trying to accommodate their students, but are you concerned that these children could become carriers of the virus and possibly infect older family members, teachers, and mm -hmm. staff at schools? You know, I, um, yes, in the beginning, I was very concerned about it, obviously, because, you know, I have kids in school. Um, the research, though, the data and the science that we are seeing from the medical professionals is saying that kids are at a very low risk of contracting this virus. In fact, in Riverside County, we have had zero deaths of anybody under the age of 17 and under, zero deaths from this virus. Some have contracted it, that is, that's true, but by and large, not nearly like it is for the older population. Now, as far as them being a carrier, again, these same medical professionals are saying they are not seeing evidence that they are transmitting the virus. So not only are they at low risk for getting the virus, it seems, um, based on what we have so far, that they're not really transmitting it. Not to say that they can't ever, but what they are saying is we don't see this on a widespread scale. I guess I feel like it's being, um, there's a fear factor involved here that perhaps is a little over the top, and that is why people are so anxious and stressed about this. I certainly understand from the adult's point of view of not wanting to have their child come home with that virus and give it to them. They may be um, in a you know more susceptible state, but if schools would allow perhaps a hybrid type of environment where there is a student who feels, you know, I just don't feel comfortable going back into the classroom setting, then perhaps they can do some distance learning or some mixture, but not make this, you know, the role for the entire state of California and for all students. I, I think we can find a middle ground. You also disagree with many of the restrictions affecting businesses. I do. Um, again, we, it seems that the big businesses, the corporations are really doing fine through all of this, it's the small businesses, it's the mom and pops, it's the ones who don't have a corporate headquarters who are being closed. 
And a lot of them, I, I don't think they're going to reopen. They simply can't afford it. There isn't enough money out there to keep them afloat. They don't have a corporation that, you know, can kind of help them survive. And that, and I'm very, very concerned about that. I think what happened with um, closing the salons and bars and, and restaurants and things like that it kind of came out of nowhere. I recognized that we had, we'd seen an upward trend in California, um, but I'm not seeing the science or the data say it's coming, the, the increase is coming because salons were open or because bars were open. That's the question for me is I'm, I'm certainly willing to, to consider any evidence that they show, but we just haven't seen it yet. So where, why is this virus spreading? That's what no one can really answer. So Senator, what would you say to people who think that you're just not taking this virus seriously enough? Oh gosh. Well, well, that's not true. I mean, I wear my mask just like everyone else. Um, I wash my hands. I keep my distance because again, it's those, those measures aren't 100%. They're not foolproof, but they can help. Um, certainly. And if there's something that I can do that can help prevent me from getting the virus, then I'm going to do it. But I do think that um, people need to try to move on with their lives, try to get back to normal as much as possible and not be so gripped by fear that we allow, you know, the state to be shut down for God only knows how long. I That, again, the mental health aspect of that, not just on the kids, but the adults, is really very troubling. We are seeing you know, an increase in substance abuse. We're going to be seeing an increase in, in suicides. We're going to be, we've certainly seen an increase in domestic abuse, um, not to mention the kids who are in a home right now um, where school is their only kind of safe place, where they're in a house with somebody who's perhaps sexually abusing them. Now they can't go to school, so they are trapped, literally trapped in their home, or women who are with an abusive spouse who are now trapped in that home. So this has far-reaching effects beyond just the economy, because I don't think it's fair to reduce it just to dollar signs. This is really um, a pandemic that has affected all aspects of our lives. All right, Senator Melendez, we appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much. And a reminder, on Wednesday, I'll be interviewing each of the Valley superintendents in a special edition of News Channel 3 at 630. We'll be taking your questions straight to them, and you can email us those questions at share at kesq.com, and we'd also love to see you. So feel free, send us a clip of yourself asking the question, which we will then show directly to our school leaders.